Good evening, everyone. Um, the lawyer that we all set you up. Yep. Oh, no. Keep it open. Uh, I am. Okay. I'm it's our friend now. Okay. I know. <laughs> so it's at 6.30, uh, I open uh, uh, this meeting of the Pumpkin Board of Selectmen uh, on Monday, February 10th. Um, this meeting is being recorded for the cable cast uh, and YouTube presentation by Area 58. Community Access Media. Uh, the video of this meeting is not to be considered an official public document. Um, so welcome everyone. I'm Mark Russo, Vice Chair. Uh, in the absence of Christine Joy tonight, uh, I'll be acting chair tonight. Um, and maybe why don't we, uh, as a starting point, um, just go around the table and um, say who we are. So I did say who I was, and maybe what your affiliation. I'm Mike Lemieux, I'm on the Finance Committee. Uh, my name is Kevin Noah, I'm the Fire Chief in Duxbury and uh, Department Head of the Rock, and we're here to uh, discuss uh, expenses related to that. Mike Mooney, I'm the Director of the Commercial and Policy Communication Center. Stephen Lewis, Finance Committee. Carol, Finance Committee. Hi, Robert, the Captain, Duxbury Fire, and also with the Rock. Nathaniel Sides, Finance Committee. Sparky, you want Good. Good. I haven't heard that in 20 years. It's been about 40. I'm glad you said it on TV now. <laughs> That's so true. It is? Uh, I'm back next to you, please, Mark. Who's Benny, town administrator? John Trano, Sloan. Um, so welcome everyone. So the main topic tonight is recent regional dispatch and the new fees. I think we had just a couple housekeeping things, or have we not had any done? Um, okay. We have some you want to hold them? Yeah, let's hold them for the end. Um, so hopefully this won't take too long. You know, three times already been meeting for an hour, and I know the best for people have not meeting to go to. Um, so um, we'll jump right in. Um, uh, the topic tonight is uh, the regional dispatch fees, the community fees, which for a little time at Portland seem pretty darn high. Um, so we wanted to meet with uh, with you all to get a better sense of where that came from. I think there's been generally a, a particular emphasis on looking at um, uh, how the numbers were assessed and there's some particular questions about the call volume. But, um, seems like maybe the first step here might be to have the Duxbury people give us a little background and then open it up for questions from the FinCom and the Board of Select. Sure. Well, on behalf of the town and uh, the Duxbury Fire Department and the Regional Colony Communication Center, thank you for having us. Um, as you know, uh, I have with me Mike Mahoney, who's the, the Regional Colony Communication Center's director. Uh, prior to that, uh, Captain Ridden here, who's an administrative day captain, pretty much uh, handled the, the, the early days of the rock. And uh, along with myself and Chief Clancy, when he was chief in, in Duxbury, we kind of created that thing. So what I do, what I thought I'd do is, if it's all right, is Rob's just gonna give a little backdrop to how we got to where we are, uh, and then I'll turn it over to Mike and he can really delve into the numbers. Sure. Now the mic's on. <laughs> so six or seven years ago, we, we had a lot of games in your town, especially with Chief Dillon, uh, who came to us with, with a lot of uh, his issues that he, that he had with the current dispatch before he was with us. Um, one of them was that we would be in dispatch by the state police, and he felt that the town of Plumpton wasn't a priority. The state police had their own men and women to deal with as opposed to Plumpton. So anything that was going on with the state police, Plumpton wasn't a priority. If there was a storm, you were put on your own to handle your own dispatch. Um, if there were police incidents, it's the same thing. Um, so his priority was for us to make sure that we're, we're, we're there, we're that safety net for the police officers and firefighters. Um, so the police officers had learned to do a lot of the jobs on their own. They didn't rely on state police. Um, they did their own, their own car stops, their data entry. But he wanted to make sure that our dispatchers, every time that was done, that would be watching over them, that would be doing the entries. The same thing with building checks. They do building checks all day long. They do a lot of that card or the data entry on their own on the computers. Um, but our dispatchers watch over that stuff. Um, so when they came to us, um, those were some of the priorities that he had. Um, the difference between us and state police is uh, 
you're an integral part of our dispatch operation. So take, for instance, last Friday. Last Friday was a busy day for us. All four towns were jumping. Normally that afternoon we run four dispatchers. But because of the call volume, we increased to having 10 people there that day to cover the call volume, not only in Plumpton, but around the three towns. Um, so I think those are some of the big differences that you see from what you, where you came from to where you, where you are now. You just mentioned the money that Plumpton has seen by becoming part of the regional. Sure. Part of development. Absolutely. So becoming regional, you know you're open to a new bucket of money, something that isn't open to neighboring towns that aren't regional. So some of the things that this town has seen, because we're regional, uh, off the top of my head, uh, a uh, phone system at the police station, uh, mobile data terminals, um, upgrades to repeater equipment, uh, better, better communications equipment. Uh, you know, one of the big ones that isn't available to a lot of smaller towns, I'll just give you an example, is um, to break it down simply, if a police officer is on the car stop, the way a lot of radio systems work, when they're calling in the, the plate, the dispatcher will answer, the dispatcher will start coming back with information. If that police officer becomes in trouble, uh, someone starts shooting at him, he's not able to key that radio up and get, get information to dispatch that he's in trouble. Um, last year, I think it was between last year and the year before, we spent $800,000 on, on communications to improve things like that for both officer and firefighter safety. Before you came to the rock, if a police officer was in trouble, he wasn't able to hit a button on his radio to get a man down signal to dispatch. That wasn't available. It wasn't available for the fire department. Those were all safety things that, that uh, we wrote grants for and enhanced our equipment so that we could. So did you supply the equipment to, to Plumpton? We, it's a backhaul of it all, yes. But we supplied the mobile data terminals, so the computers okay. Okay. Um, and all the, the backbone. Okay. So you, you've gotten a tremendous amount. Um, product for belonging and and that's not only shared in, in, in the fact that you were paying zero for so many years but also that development that that infrastructure that need to be improved um, for for the region and uh, dollar cents wise I think um, Mike I'll yield to you and you can pick it up from there but I think there's a, a dollar amount that we can see that they yeah, I mean, all told, the Rock's seen $8 million in development funding. I mean, that's to include our, our construction project. But for Plimpton alone, I, I didn't even put every bit the, the town received, but I think everybody had gotten one of these packets, the, the page in there with development projects, um, $193,000. And that's just some of the big ticket items that I grab. That's not itemizing each So when you look at that, that annual fee, I just want you to think of it as a, as a big picture um, in some of the, the infrastructure improvements you've, you've seen with that. Um, originally, when um, Chief Dillon uh, expressed an interest and when Chief Clancy and I were, were attending those seminars that were paid for by 911 um, consultant to, to look into regionalization, um, Clifton and Duxbury were the two towns that were left standing. Everybody else kind of walked away and we said, yeah, this is, this is good for us not only because of that, that carrot of that extra money that the state provided on, on the 911, but also we could be, become more efficient with our, with our own people. Um, and so as uh, Plimpton joined that, um, those early years, we saw no increase in staffing. So that's the reason why it was zero. But as your town and community has gotten uh, busier, both on the fire and the police side, and your demographics in town, your call volume has, has increased. And um, I'll let Mike walk through the, the numbers of, of what you got um, as far as volume and how you wanted to go from there. Yeah, I know there was some concern about how the, the call volume was calculated. If you, if you look at the main page there, we have you listed as 15,000 call volume. There's truly no perfect metric that we can use to measure how much impact any one community has on the dispatch center because there are so many shared resources. But one that we do have is every item that gets logged into our records management system is just a tick on, on your tally. So we use the same measurement for all of the towns and that's what we come up with. So Duxbury's got 32,000, Halifax 12,000, Plimpton 15,000, and Rochester 12,000. So I actually backed out a couple of thousand after speaking to Chief Clancy because he had, way back when, prior to being regional, um, 
the police officers have to do a pre-check each day when they come in pre-shift check. Um, so I, I removed all of that. Um, and it, what does it mean, pre-shift? So the chief can probably explain it a little bit better, but it's one item that I could agree with the chief that the dispatch truly has nothing to do with. It's the officer gets here, he makes sure his car starts and his rifles in the car, and you know he has all of his equipment that he needs, and he doesn't call any of that in to dispatch. But it does get logged into the records management system. So because it's going over a data term? Yes, okay. over the over the mobile data term. Okay. So I I backed those out of the total. Um, but the the change in percentage was negligible even by backing out those those two thousand calls. And the concern we have is that it just doesn't feel right. We're less than half the population of uh, Halifax. Yep. And we got more volume and we're concerned that is there something going on in the volume that we can correct that wouldn't affect the dispatch? So, so the, a the way that things, let me just talk about your infrastructure changed when, when, and the numbers weren't perfect, and I'll just express this briefly. So when Chief Dylan Plimpton came over, the numbers weren't perfect because you didn't have a very good records management system sure. at the time. Understandably so, we guesstimated where you guys would be. And as uh, Chief uh, Basori uh, increased staff and became a, 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 a round the clock 24 7 organization. And you started to see an uptick in, in traffic on 44, a major highway, and as well, in, as, well as Cisco coming online. I, those were three of the things that I saw that, that, that pushed your run count up. And as we looked at that run count and, and started to adjust for it, we, would, we were tending to catch some revenue stream increases from state 911, which would always kind of cover the expense that we had. But we've gotten to the point now where Plimpton really is a very busy community. I don't think you guys realize how much you guys do. You do a tremendous amount, both on the fire, EMS, and law enforcement. You have major roadways that intersect with this town. And, and those, all those incidences take dispatcher action. And that's what, that's what the, the cost is associated with. So I think Mike was uh, previously had, had, had discussions with Liz that we, were, we, were, we, we know we needed to get to that, that number eventually. And in fact, we um, increased it this past year to 50,000. And then by our calculations and to, to figure on, on growth, that that 200,000 number was, was what we had believed was the accurate number based on that run count. When, when, you co when you get a call, do you code it so yes. that you know what's going on? Yes. Do you supply that to us? I could, yep. So one of the biggest ticket items in that category are building checks and motor vehicle stops. The town of Plimpton does far more of those than any of our other communities combined. And it's something the chief had started years ago and Chief Dillon continued with. The traffic enforcement is very strict in town and the building checks are something that are done religiously. They're, the guys are out several times a shift checking buildings. And as Rob said, when you were with the state police, some of that was just kind of handled on, on its own. Now that you remember the rock, that's all monitored. Every time an officer is out checking a building, they're either calling it in on the radio or even if they don't call it in on the radio, the second they do anything on their MDT, that says they're out of the car or they're checking a building, it pops up in the dispatch. So then the dispatcher will monitor them, have the radio on, follow the law, make sure that officer clears they're safe and then back out on patrol. Whether it's a quick ride around the Dunnett School, a quick ride around this campus, or whatever other umpteen buildings they check, the, the gas station, they check every, you know, church, town square, every, every single thing in town gets a check at some point throughout the course of their shift. I'm assuming that's going on in the other towns too, right? It is, but not to the extent, okay. um, to be honest. And part of that is driven by the calls for service, where some of the other towns are being called out to specific calls more frequently than just generalized patrol, as, as Plimpton has. So that's not to say you're not getting called out for just as many overdoses or domestic violence or medical emergencies as, as the other communities, but. I think, uh, Mike, I'd like to see, you know, I, you know, you and I talked just to, I, to, I told you what was coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I get the concept that they are, uh, that they're there uh, in sort of you know, monitoring the, the activity, 
Well, it's like a 9,000. Uh, when you when you take up the building, the commercial building checks, directed patrols, and the house wash checks, it's 9,000. So uh, that's a massive number. My guys, uh, they do those soup to nuts. They're doing them on their laptop. Probably most of the, the vast majority of the time, you guys don't even know what happened because they just log that's, them in. Not to argue, but that's not true. They know every time someone, because the audio cues Well, they see the thing, but yeah. But, but realistically, you know, so our guys are, are loading that, populating that. Um, so, and, you know, I think that that's, we have to get, we have to, you know, come to some kind of balance there. Because those are, I mean, you know, what's the number for Rochester? Was it 12,000? Called one, yeah. So just our building checks is 9,000. So, that, you know, comparing us to Rochester is a, uh, there's got to be a, uh, you, you, we've, got, we've got to come up with some other means. It's, I know it's not easy. We've been, we've been trying to do this for yeah, a the, long the, time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the thing is, even with the, so even if you take, take the 15,000 and just cut it in half arbitrarily cut it in half so you're down to 7500 you still account for 10 percent which is still 165 170 thousand dollars which is far more than the 50. so regardless of how we can matriculate an accurate count or come up with a metric that all the towns agree with the fact of the matter remains it's going to go up unfortunately it's just oh, yeah. but i i think that that theory um is going to prevent us from ballooning by more of the officer actions and, and less dispatcher activity. And you can kind of keep that number in check. And keep in mind, if, if you know, always remember that number. If you were running something on your own, you'd be in the, the $400,000, $500,000 range. And, and I think Mike did a, a spreadsheet on that. Um, and I think you have that, at, that in your packet. So I want you to. to to go from zero to 50 to 200,000, yeah, is a lot of money. I get that, I see that. Should we have started that creep up sooner than later? Probably should have, and that's my fault. Um, but at the end of the day, you're getting a, a robust, redundant, good service for 200K, and most towns can't touch that for, for, for 500, 600,000 dollars. I don't know what you have for a number there, if you were to, to run it on your own, and then you wouldn't be at all successful with any of the development grants, any of the infrastructure build up and all that other stuff. Now, can we negotiate a, a, a price to, to step up to that amount? Yeah, I, th I, I think I can work with you on that to get there. But at the end of the day, 200,000 is really cheap for what you're getting. You, and, and, I, and I get that, you were at zero and now you're paying 200. And, and I know the town you know, doesn't, doesn't have a lot of tax base, I, I get that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, early numbers were kind of skewed because we really had uh, not very good tracking, at least on the fire side of the house. You've improved your fire department where they're going to more calls because they're there and available as opposed to just law enforcement investigating something and fire not rolling. That's a big difference I've seen. And, and for the better. Um, and your ambulances uptick. I think we see a 10% increase across the board annually with ambulance uh, transport. So your, your volume's there, your traffic stops are there, you've got you know, a big industry, and I don't keep, mean to keep har harping on Cisco, but you do a lot of calls for Cisco, uh, inspections, investigations, th that type of thing, um, fire department alarms, and, and, and so on. So I, I don't think that, that number's too far off. You do a tremendous amount of traffic stops. You're very heavy in, in, in traffic enforcement. One, one other thing to look at also is your, your ambulance. Like the chief said, when you became full-time, before you were full-time, you weren't on those mutual aid run cards for your neighbors, and now you are. So you go going to Carver on a regular basis, you go going to Kingston on a regular basis. Those were never, those weren't, that didn't happen in the past. Well, we, yeah, well, we recover. All these other towns have full-time as well. Like, and two or three things from my perspective. Sure. One, we know we got a great service. When we did that tour, when you started years ago, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's clear it's really professional and much better than we can do and really, really appreciate it. At the same time, we truly are a little tiny town, and a, a jump from fifty thousand to two hundred thousand, um, you know, for this town, that's a huge hit. Sure. Really, pretty unexpected. Um, so we, we would hope for something at worst, a little more gradual and a little more kind of in line with inflation and all that. 
Um, but I, I think the big piece is, and I, I suppose it's always the problem with regionalization, is deciding how to assess for each town. And of course, we go through this endlessly with Silver Lake. Um, sure. But you know, doing it on the basis of call volume that's just all out of proportion, which the size of the town doesn't feel like it makes much sense. Um, and I mean, even if these things are ticking into your system, it's a whole bunch different that someone did a house call, a house check, as versus uh, you know some catastrophe that's going to take a lot of time. Um, so I, I think in general we feel like some other means rather than call volume is the way to do the assessment that gets it more in line with, uh, um, with the size town that we are. So, we, I mean, so the, the I'm fine we, with... We give, give a weighted value to the instance, go through the incident codes. So I'm fine with that, but I just caution you because if we adjust the way we calculate things for Plimpton, we have to adjust the way we calculate yeah. it for everyone. So there is a potential there that it swings the wrong way. For another community, and Rochester could drop lower, and now Plimpton homes are so bigger. And, and let me just let me just say where that formula system came from. That was, and, and I'm sure you have it in your archives here somewhere. When Plimpton participated in the, that hired consultant from 911 who studied the, the eight communities, um, the gentleman um, formulated that that formula basically to say, you know, when we all asked him, hey, how do you bill for this? You know, one way to do it is, is how many employees do I think I need to hire to, to cover the town of Plimpton, and then figure that salary range, and then add 40% for, for, for fringe benefits, for benefits, and then a 10% buffer to, to guide me is one way, or well, the other way is to look at volume, and he, and he suggested strongly we looked at volume, and volume was based on population and call volume, run count because that's interaction between a dispatcher and a, and a person in the street. I agree with you, uh, you know, a, an officer using an MDT, even though we're there watching him to make sure he's safe, it's, 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 it's not an, an effort on our part where we have to communicate something or take a telephone call or, or something like that. So if we were to uh, take a look at that, that number. Um, and it, it would and help if, if we had like six buckets. I'm just picking up a number. Sure. So that, and we could see all the towns. Because one of the things that would drop out, if we're doing something that we could revise, maybe there's an opportunity, I don't know if you, if you people come back and make recommendations around, you know, how to be more efficient or et cetera. But right now we've got an overall number and it doesn't, it doesn't feel right, but if, if the buckets fall out and it looks like that's the way it's got to be, then fine, that's the way it's got to be. Sure. We just, in the end, we have to go back and explain to the finance committee, and then we have to explain it to our residents. Sure. So you're, you're looking for like a matrix that shows wh where your run counts are, you know, basically break down, you know, fire yeah, calls and police calls? I guess the major, I'm not sure if I, you know, yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think it, well, you know, when this first came out, I said, oh, okay, what, uh, can, you know, how can I segregate the, um, a lot of that offer, officer initiated stuff. But I said, I'm not going to have two records management systems in my building. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a great system that we've had for a long time, and it predates going over to Duxbury. We had the IMC product prior to that, and that's what they have there. So, it's, you know, we had that nice uniformity. Um, but, you know, the, the other argument can be made is that we're paying for them to be listening 24-7 anyhow. So the, the, the point that they're watching over while they're doing these building checks, they're there anyways. We're paying them to be listening to that radio 24-7. So it's, um, you know, so you can, you can sort of carve that a, a couple different ways. I think that, um, you know, and the last thing I'm gonna do is tell my people to, to slow down. Oh, right. We're getting, you, you're getting, uh, you know, from an from a operational discipline standpoint, they are the most disciplined in this, this group. Um, you know they're they're falling through on on their on the expectations we have them, but uh, and I really think that uh, that we might be able to to look at as a weighted system where a building check or something to that effect is half a point twenty you know and then to break down the, the various types of responses and maybe a certain other type of responses you know we calculate as two points and we come up with a point system something to that effect. And you're right, maybe it doesn't change anything, but I think that would make us feel a hell of a lot better about the, um, you know, those that's 9,000 numbers that are sort of being, what we feel, are being treated just the same as a domestic disturbance response, a car crash in one of those other towns. 
Um, so. Is, is there any hope that other towns might come on and that will share the burden? Yeah, so that was my, my next point. Um, that's where we are today, in, in all honesty. So new guidelines have come out for development grants, and it's tremendous news for, for towns that have ever considered joining a regional. Um, basically, the, in the <coughs> carrot and the stick instance, the carrot has gotten very big now. They're, they're really incentivizing the idea of regionalization which is going to drive more towns to join. And The Rock is particularly in a place where we already have Hanson signed on. They're coming. That's, that's a done okay. deal. So you can see many of the spreadsheets I have you included Hanson on it because we know that's where we're headed. We also have several other towns that have knocked on the door and want to see things because when our new building's done, it's truly going to be where do you the latest that? and greatest. Can you double it? Yeah, we can, we can more than double. Uh, okay. We built the new building to uh, handle an estimated population of 100,000. Um, Is that collated where the old one was? Yes. Close by? Yeah, it's directly on top of it. Oh. Yeah. Is an addition. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we ripped off yep. the second floor and put a bigger one on top. Yeah, so we've gone from five dispatch seats to 15. Uh, we have several towns, like I said, already knocking on the door. And that's the beauty of this whole concept. We're there now. With Hanson, you'll start to see the increase in the overall operations budget will be less than your decrease in percentage, if, if you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. if I'm explaining that correctly. So. When we add another town, that difference is even more substantial. So for random numbers sake, the operating budget were to go up another half a million, but the drop in your percentage drops your overall assessment because you're only paying 13% of 3 million as opposed to 25% you know, sure. of yeah. 2 million. Yeah. So yeah, there is a benefit to that, additional towns. and. Um, as Mike said, there's other towns that are interested. There's one that's porting us now. I don't know which way they'll slide. Um, but the, uh, and the other thing that, that we could take a look at too um, is I think is maybe I can get together with Liz and, and, and you guys can discuss after we leave, you know, what's a, what's a number we can hit? And we'll furnish that data for you can, you can see. But it's, it's more than 50. And if 200,000 isn't the number yep. based on the data that we provided, somewhere in between that. And, and then how do we get there? And how can we get there together? I think that and, would be and helpful. I, and I think that's where we need to, to yeah. for the solution for this discussion, yeah. you know, is, is where we need to be. Um, I, I, mean, I would just stress, I, we surely want to pay our fair share. It yeah. just doesn't feel like this is our fair and share. And just remember about the, the, the school committee stuff. So one town, one vote. Not like the way it's, it, it happens. Uh, is, is, is part of the region is as far as when we do stuff together. Uh, Plimpton stands there as strong as, as Duxbury or, or anybody else with, with your input from your, your police chief and, and, and your fire chief. And, and again, we don't have students, we have call volume, we have run count, and we could shave it and look at just 911 calls. Um, well, good. As I always use 2633. To, what's that? I always use 2633. Well, and then you don't include the business calls like you just said. And so, you know, um, we could look at that. But generally, when we looked at those other numbers, um, they generally all came out about, about the same. Um, and, and having said that, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll certainly go back and, and look at a weighted system. Um, and that weighted system might, like I said, go wrong for somebody else and, and be great for, for someone else. But based on the consultant's report and um, his recommendation, um, we based it on call volume and population. And that was a number and that was a percentage of the overall budget. Right. So we the action or go ahead. No? Then calm? Okay. Good. So I think I'm hearing two or three action steps. You guys are gonna look at a weighted system or a sure. possibility of that. We are gonna work with Liz um, to sort of find some number in between that seems mutually okay and yep. continue the conversation that way. Any other steps we're working on right now? It's still like a little breakdown to understand. You know, yeah, and I think with that weighted system yeah. that we're going to try and get back to you with, okay. that, that should have okay. that Great. those answers for you. So you can see comparably maybe from town to town where, you, where you, you are. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, and then the other thing is is that we'll, you know, we'll look to alternative sources with this new 
um, formula that 911 has come out with to see if that can help us at all. Okay, great. Excellent. I mean, is that pretty much? We appreciate you coming out. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I think it goes without saying we all want it, this to work. Absolutely. You know, yeah. We know we're, we're in a good, <laughs> a good regional solution. We just want to make sure that we feel comfortable. No, you're doing your due diligence, which I would be doing the same if I was sitting on the other side of the table. I'm the one who comes in and asks for the money all the time. <laughs> the time so. I get it. Any last uh, words, anyone? Thank Beautiful. You great job. It's all right, fantastic guys. Product. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Very good yep. All right. You have a good night. Okay. And we'll thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know how you feel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's a good one. They do it. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Thank Sir, you very much. thank you. Appreciate it. So, so just reminding everyone the video is still on, so beware. All right. I can't. Good night. What was that? <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know if we have anything Bring left. We have, some oh, we have some appointments. Okay. Cultural. Thank you, Queen Kong. Thank you. <laughs> here, I'll come over here. Okay. Um, so we have one here for Scott Dinacola, um, full-time patrolman through June 30th, 2020. So I make a motion that we uh, appoint uh, Scott uh, as described. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Then we have um, Elizabeth Wesley to the Cultural Council until June 30th, 2020. Wow, great. Um, hey, so, I'll do that too. Hmm? I'll do that too. Uh, uh, I want another person on the Cultural Council. We may end up needing to take you up on that. What do we yeah, have, brief four? I have volunteered to do that as well. Would you do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'll start right. with them. Put me on. So, um, well, I think we already have four, right? All together. Well, I'm not yeah, doing but we need marksman. five. <laughs> you know what? Oh, good. We All right. I'm off again. So we'll, so we'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, um, Nick. All right. So I make a motion. Um, uh, uh, we appoint Elizabeth Wesley as described. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Then um, could you make a motion for Nathaniel Sides um, as described through June 30th and um, you can sign so at a later date. Then um, M. Elizabeth Randall through June 30th. This is all cultural council. Um, uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And then we have Heather Sanda through June 30th, 2020, cultural council. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then Jennifer Zanoli to the Cultural Council through June 30th. Wow. That's so, great. So we have five. Our now? recruitment worked. Very nice. Um, so I make a motion for Jennifer as well. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. The power of social media. <laughs> all right. Anything else? That'll do it. Okay. That's a wrap. Uh, anything, Bree? Good night. Yay. All right. Uh, so we thank everyone. Wish everyone a good week. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, meeting adjourned. Good. Thank you. Uh,